and welcome to this episode of Flyby, presented by the National Model Aviation Museum. I'm your host, Claire, and today I'll be talking about models at work with a series of target drones, the FQM-117A, B, and C. In order to stay at the top of their game with surface-to-air weapons, military gunners must practice tracking and shooting down aircraft as much as possible. Using full-scale airplanes for target practice is very cost-prohibitive, so the solution to this problem is to use model aircraft, which are much cheaper than their full-size counterparts. The idea of using model aircraft as an inexpensive substitute was first introduced during World War II with the OQ-2A and has been in effect ever since. A slightly more modern example of models being used in this way would be the FQM Target Drone Series. Over three decades after the introduction of the OQ-2A, RS Systems began supplying the U.S. Army in June of 1979 with a simple, low-cost radio control miniature air target, shortened to RC MAT, known as the FQM-117A. This was a small delta wing target with a nose mounted engine. It would be hand launched by one person and then controlled via radio control by trained RC MAP pilots. Military personnel would receive airframe and ground support kits which contained all the necessary elements for building and flying these models. Spare parts for the aircraft were included in the kits because it was meant to be shot down and then repaired. This RC mat was used for training in surface-to-air gun systems, and more specifically, the FAM-92 Stinger Man Portable Air Defense Missile System. If a missile hit the aircraft, it would be destroyed, but if guns were used, the bullets would often pass right through the foam. After a flight, teams would retrieve the aircraft and repair them if possible. Bullet strikes would be painted over so instructors would not confuse them with bullet strikes from previous flights. Up until December of 1983, more than 30,000 of these UAVs were delivered to the U.S. military. To provide more realistic training, the Augmented RC Mat, or ARC Mat, was introduced two years prior in 1981. This essentially was just extra parts to replace the nose of the FQM-117A with a three-dimensional piece and the addition of a two-dimensional fuselage and tail. If you have any examples of this, either through photographs or objects, please get in touch with us at collections at modelaircraft.org. Beginning in the mid-1980s, RS Systems retired the FQM-117A from the sky and introduced a more realistic, fully three-dimensional air target that represented Soviet aircraft. The FQM-117B was designed as a one-ninth scale of a Soviet MiG-27 Flogger D. It was used in air defense, small arms training, gunnery practice for automatic weapons, and tracking training for infrared systems such as the Red Eye and Stinger. This UAV has no rudder, so flight is controlled by throttle, ailerons, and elevators. Shortly after introducing the FQM-117B, RS Systems began supplying the U.S. military with the FQM-117C. This was a 1 9th scale model of a U.S. fighter aircraft, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. This UAV was used with the Soviet MiG-27s in exercises for friend and foe recognition. Once gunners were finally becoming comfortable shooting down the MiG-27s with the surface-to-air weapons, the RC MAP pilots would mix things up by flying out the F-16s. They did this to see if the gunners would recognize a friendly plane and avoid shooting it down. But oftentimes, as soon as the F-16s came into sight, they were hit with an onslaught of ammunition. The gunners would quickly realize their mistake. Fortunately, it was made only on models and not full-scale aircraft in a combat situation. After quite a bit of practice, they would be able to recognize friend from foe and shoot down the correct aircraft. These target drones use was limited only by the imagination of the unit commanders, the skill of the target operators, and the safety restrictions of the target ranges. They can be flown in almost any weather with the only limiting factor being the visual reference required for flying. The maneuverability of this target matches and exceeds that of any full-sized fixed-wing aircraft. This challenges gunners by flying in a realistic manner. The RC map pilots would often take full advantage of the terrain features, evasive measures, and scale speed in order to increase the proficiency of gunners. 
Before being replaced by more versatile and realistic models, more than 100,000 FQM-117 targets of all versions were delivered to the U.S. Army. While originally intended for military use, these UAVs have become a part of the hobby for some modelers. These individuals have taken to forms to try and find leftover FQM-117Bs to buy. They often modify them to their pleasing by adding more powerful engines, landing gear, and a rudder. Some have even increased the control surface size of both the ailerons and elevators. And of course, many have given their personalized MiG-27s a nice custom paint job. Putting time and effort into customization would not be at the front of the RC Matt pilot's mind simply because these airplanes were originally intended to be used for target practice. Luckily, some of these models survived these shooting ranges and we are able to enjoy them today. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Flyby. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or corrections, please email us at museum at modelaircraft.org. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.